So the last thing that we're going to do is combine two different shapes to make a complex piece of geometry. This looks more complicated than any of the other ones that we've worked on, but if we really look at what this shape is, we have half of a cube, or at least a cube on the bottom, and then a cylinder, or half cylinder, on top. And we've just applied some extrusions along that and added a little fancy shape to kind of look like a keyhole here. So. Let's see if we can work on that. I'm going to hide this thing. I'm going to show my grid again. Okay. Now, I've been changing the colors of my background. That's just by hitting Alt-B, and you'll see all those different versions of color that you can have there. Uh, I'm going to stay with this one for now. Uh, I'm in my renderer viewport 2.0, and I'm just going to go ahead and... Let me add that sky dome. I don't want that there. Okay. Let me create a cylinder. Now we know this cylinder has to get tipped. So to do that, we can just go ahead and rotate that on our z-axis 90 degrees. So we have that. And I want my radius to be 1 and my height to be about 3 here. OK. Now I'm going to create a cube. Now that cube was made, but I can't find it. It's inside of here. So let's just go ahead and I know it's there, but I can't find it. I'm going to go into the poly cube and I'm going to change the width to being three and my depth to being about two. Okay. And I want my uh, subdivisions depth to be set to two as well. That gives me this one division around this direction. And that's going to be helpful because I see that there is this center point, and I want to make sure that I have this point and that center point in the cylinder match up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move up my cylinder so that way it lays on top of my box. Now, going into uh, multiple viewports, I'm going to select the from the side view. Right click on my object, go to face mode, click and drag across, hit delete. Okay, now that I have that, I'm going to also delete the top faces that are um, hidden by the cylinder. So if I move that out away, I can see that there's these top two faces that need to go away. So again, right clicking, going on to face mode, holding down uh, the shift key and selecting across both of those hit delete and again we making sure that it stays where it's supposed to be just hold on the x key and drag that to snap it in place all right i have both of these i'm gonna go to mesh combine and i am going to select across all of these and go to uh, edit mesh merge and you'll notice, before I had that command, you'll see these kind of double-edged, uh, this appearance of like having that kind of fuzzy edge there. When you do that, the merge, that's getting a threshold, and if I increase that too much, it's going to merge way too much stuff. So it's basically uh, merging uh, objects around that threshold. So any vertices that's there, it's going to combine those together. That's what I wanted. I'm just going to right-click go to object mode again so I can see this thing all right that's looking good now I am going to go to my face mode and drag across I have everything selected this is a fast way of selecting certain pieces I want these pieces right here and there so I dragged across and now I'm gonna hold down control and drag across the middle section to deselect that I just have those two. All right, I am going in to go into my modeling toolkit, and I'm going to extrude. I just pull that out, maybe about that far. Okay, and I'm going to do that again. I'm going to press extrude one more time. I'm going to press this little button that looks like a power button, and I'm going to try and scale it. So, whoop, making sure that you're not. And let me 
do that one more time to show you. So I've extruded once. I'm extruding again. Let's just see if we can do it this way. I'm going to scale up and then in. All right, that looks better. So I've got myself kind of this edge here. I'm going to extrude one more time. I'm going to press that and then just move this in. Now let's look at the other side. Did it do that? Yes. You'll notice that it mirrored kind of that same behavior on both sides when you had that selected. It's a fast way to be able to work. Now, I want to make sure that I can have like a lip to this so it looks like it can open. I noticed that this cylinder all of a sudden got kind of skewed when I uh, started to extrude. So I want to make sure that that's just aligned with the other parts. So I'm just going to select both of the vertices. So select vertice mode and then move that down so it kind of looks like it's going straight across. Now, here's where the tedious work comes in. And this is also where I want you to be aware of the uh, concept of only working on one side of your model and then mirroring over the piece. So I could, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do here. I'm going to delete these pieces out. I'm just going to hit delete. Now I need to go into my multi-cut tool. You'll notice it's kind of snapping to a vertex. So you'll left click there, left click there. And I, I just get out of that tool by pressing like Q or W and the move tool or select tool, anything just to end that operation. I'm going to go again, the multi-cut tool, and then go maybe from here to there. Okay. So I have myself these little plank pieces that I'm going to work with. Not 100%, but it's, it's pretty okay. I know that this piece is bigger than that, but that's going to be fine for the sake of this exercise. Um, there's a way that we could fix that too. We could move this whole top part up, but I'm not going to deal with that. Uh, notice I still have n-gons though. I have this thing, which is one edge, two, three, four, five. Whoops, where did it go? There we go. And then I got multiple pieces here too. So we always need to make sure we're in tries or quads. So I'm just going to click from here and go straight down. Okay, what a pain in the butt. You know, I, I just sat here and I clicked and clicked and clicked to do that. Do you really want to have to go over here and do that? No. So let's do something different here. So I'm going to go straight across the top of my model and I'm going to use that multi-cut tool. I'm going to hold down the control key before I click anywhere, hold down control and you'll notice it'll go along this edge. And then if I hold down shift, you'll notice it'll go right in the middle of my model. Now click. Okay, it just added this. Don't be afraid. Now's a good time to save. So save, and then select all these faces, delete, gone. Now, let's go ahead and make a couple more modifications to this, and then we're gonna just mirror that over and it's gonna do all the same pieces that we already worked on onto the other side. So the first thing I wanna do, I wanna make sure that this is flush, or not flush, but I wanna make sure it's kinda on the same level. Right now that's kinda dipping upwards. Uh, I wanna make that so it's kinda like that. And now I'm going to take my faces, all of these, I'm going to hit extrude. I'm going to push that down. It gave me some stuff I don't need. It gave me all of this. So I could select a couple of them and then double click and it'll give me uh, the ability to just have them all selected. So click, double click, you have them all, delete, got rid of those pieces we don't need. And now I'm just going to grab these and let's see if we can apply an extrude here. I 
just push that in a little bit. It did that same problem for me. So I'm gonna grab that and double click across that to get rid of them. So don't make sure if I did that, so if I have this one and that one, if I double click on it, so click, double click, it's getting those, but it's also going along this edge loop. So we don't want that to be selected. So to prevent that, just click and drag across here. Delete. Now we've just gotten that out. I'm going to do some more cleanup here. Just making sure that this is level. Or at least as clean looking as possible. I can take maybe these two on the inside and then pull that in. All right, I like that. All right, just press this button. And you broke it. Let's see if we can... Fix that. There we go. I had cut geometry on, turn that off, and now I have this. So I started with just one half, and now I have double. I'm not working harder, I'm working smarter. Now I still see that this part's kind of not following that same path. So go here and here, select those front ones, select those back ones, scale it. Okay. Now, I have basically a treasure chest. I just need to put a little uh, lock on top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create um, a cube. And let's just move that up a little bit. And I am going to hold down shift with this face selected, which is just that front one. So I've moved a tiny cube right here. Right click, face, select that, and then scale. So hold down shift and scale that down. And let's just grab these vertices on top and push those down. And I'm gonna select that top face. So it's hard to see all of it, it's just tucked in there. Pull that up. And then pull that up here. I'm gonna grab those and I'm gonna hold down shift and then scale that again. It's kind of look more like a lock. Last but not least, I'm just gonna take this one, pull that in. So I kind of have a little lock on here. Now, if you want it to stay congruous with that curve, because right now it's not, it's kind of bumping itself out, just grab that edge. And there you go. So I want you to try and figure out how can you get that look of those planks in there. So let's pull up the other one. So here's this one right here, let me hide that. How can you get something like that? How can you get that to happen? So I want you to decorate this on however you want and make sure, right now I have a ton of history on here. I'm going to do a mesh combine probably assign some materials to it first and then do the combine so we will have that all set um, I can go into my hyper shade and to make a material I'll delete those just so they're not there I'll show you how to do that from scratch we're gonna go under our Arnold shader standard surface and there's not one that's really like wood um, but we could probably try let's see I 
tried a couple of these. Some are good, some are not so great. Uh, I've tried rubber. I think it can sort of work for what we're doing today. Uh, color, I'm going to double click on that, make it more brown. Hit done. And I'm going to have my object selected. And I'm going to drag middle mouse button drag. So just middle mouse button drag it to my object. And obviously these parts would be metal on the sides. So we can just go ahead and I can hit control D to duplicate that shader. And now under here for presets, I'll go to, uh, let's say maybe copper. And instead of dragging it onto everything, I'm going to select the faces and then deselect. So I'm going first, I'm selecting my out model. I'm right clicking. I'm going to face mode, dragging across deselecting and you kind of just got to deselect each of these on the sides not too bad okay and then I'm going to assign that and I'm also going to grab that lock so I did this before combining everything just because it would be a little bit faster you're noticing that it looks a little bit uh, like it's just black because we're in Arnold shaders and it won't show up in viewport 2.0 like that so we have to go into our Arnold viewport and press play I put a sky dome light so just create that and that's kind of where I'm going with this so how could you add some of those edges to make that look wooden. Maybe you want to add, like we did with the crate, some uh, rivets along the side, decorate that once you've made that your own. Um, I still want it to maintain that same silhouette, so don't go crazy. Um, make sure it's all combined. So I'm gonna go to Mesh, Combine, Edit, Delete by Type and History, and we're going to call this one crate, or sorry, chest. That's all ready to go. Make sure you give me the chest file, the vase file, and the crate file. 